Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Unfortunately, not all the time is the existing concrete a good enough candidate for treating it with a decorative treatment such as a, a acid stain or perhaps a saw cutting. So a skim coat or a cement based topping is a wonderful alternative to resurfacing that concrete and starting with a clean canvas. Now there's a variety of different types of skim coats. Uh, where would you use them? Well, it depends. I mean, we've used skin, skim coats as a, as a complete uh, final floor alternative for an interior house. We've used them on garage floors, around pool decks and pool surrounds, patios, driveways, you name it. We've used them uh, interior and exterior. We've even used skim coats on walls to create some uh, one-of-a-kind pieces of art. Now, it's important that you check with the manufacturer because different manufacturers have different uh, guidelines and specifications for their skim coats. Coverage rates could vary, surface prep could vary, and that's the key to a successful skim coat application is how you prepare the surface. Um, you want to get a light profile so the material has a chance to adhere. Now in this particular skim coat, this manufacturer, manufacturer recommends a double prime. And what I mean by that is we typically will prime the night before the application with one coat of primer or roughly 10 hours before the application, come back that next morning, and while one, one person is setting up the mixing station, another person is priming. And then uh, you come back, and once it's hazed over and it's tack free, we've, the, we've already applied our second coat of primer, we're ready to go and start applying our skim coat. This type of a skim coat is what I call a semi-self-leveling. It is not a self-leveling agent, but it's not a squeegee grade skim coat. This has a very interesting final effect, very similar to hard troweled concrete. Well, in fact, we're out on knee boards troweling it, just if it was a slab of concrete, as I'm about to show you. Um, so we'll be working off of spiked knee boards. I do put it down with a, 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 a roller. It's called a, a turbo roller that basically has little ridges in it for uh, kind of dispersing it across the surface. It acts as a squeegee a little bit. Metal buckets are very important. Uh, we, we don't like using plastic five gallon buckets because uh, inevitably what happens is, depending on your mixing paddle, it'll start to shred the bucket as the paddle is a uh, high RPM going around, it's hitting the side of the bucket, it'll start to tear little shreds of bucket, plastic, uh, plastic bucket off. And that's very frustrating when you're trying to put down a sixteenth of an inch. Now this material goes down at an eighth of an inch. You don't want to go any thicker than one eighth of an inch and you don't want to go any thinner than one eighth of an inch. And the reason for that is if you go thinner you're going to be troweling sand and you're not going to get a good smooth surface. And if you go any thicker than that it's prone to cracking at that thickness. One of the uh, elements that makes this product so unique is the coloring system. So Ron is going to go ahead and just dump a ribbon right along the border roughly uh, six to eight inches away and he'll keep pouring as we go. And then I'm going to come back with a color and you, this is one simple way of coloring it. You can simply broadcast coloring right into the material wet. And then what we'll do is we'll blend the color with a roller. And this gives it a real subtle marbleized effect. And it's that easy to get some really interesting color effects. Now, with this material, as the temperatures are rising and increasing, you really want to get it down quick. And usually, depending on the size project, I'm, I want two people uh, doing this. I would like a guy on a roller and a guy hand troweling. Because the longer it sits after I've rolled like that, the less prone to leveling back out you have. So it's really important to get it down quick. And uh, no more than a couple of minutes should transpire before I'm out on that rolling. All right, Ron, let's get with the next, uh, next ribbon there. You'll notice I try to keep it in the material here. I don't want the powder to get out on the concrete. That could be a problem with bond. All right, we put our first bucket down. Uh, a couple of minutes, minutes has uh, transpired, probably two to three minutes, which is actually in the heat. It's warm in here. It's good, good 90 degrees inside this warehouse. 
And uh, normally I would have troweled it by now. Like I said, the longer you wait, the, uh, the less it's going to level out. So you want to virtually trowel it as quick as you can. Now you'll notice on the subject of trowels, I'm using a nice 20 inch trowel. A lot of people would say, let's use a pool trowel because it's easier. Actually, I want a nice, rigid, straight trowel because it lays it down nice and flat, OK? So you'll notice my trowel motion, too, is very organic, all right? I'm blending the colors. I'm going different directions. And for best results, I do like to come back and actually second trowel this. What I mean is uh, in normal conditions, I'll come back and I'll hit this a second time, uh, depending on the conditions. That could be 30 minutes. It could be two hours, depending on the conditions. Roughly uh, 25 to 30 minutes has transpired. Uh, more or less, this whole surface has doled out, meaning there's no damp or moist spots. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with my second troweling. Um, Step gingerly. You don't want to step uh, with, with your weight not distributed um, evenly or right over the boards. I have seen people step out and see the board just go scraping right across and they end up on their tail. So you got to be careful when you're stepping on these boards. So remember, my first pass, I went this direction. So now I'm going to see if I can't cross it. And this is perfect. This is where you really get this beautiful burnished appearance. There's just enough surface moisture as you can see, to really blend the color. Now, obviously, on a much larger job, you would have probably got on it just a bit sooner, and certainly you would have had enough help to help uh, trowel on this second trowel. But this type of troweling here is what really takes it over the top, and you'll actually see a shine. I'll be able to polish this out.